We're here at the 2012 Lafayette Farm Toy Show and Display Contest with Doug Peterson who has won the grand prize. This is a, a hand-built trophy by Jeff Moore of Moore's Farm Toys. It features the new Prairie Monster Big Bud 740 from the Toy Tractor Times and Williams Brothers Big Bud. Jeff puts a lot of detail into our trophies each year and we really appreciate that. And uh, congratulations Doug on your, your win. This is a kind of a, a three-peat for the Michigan Mafia, which is a good group of guys that build displays. Yeah, this is third year in a row for us here, here at Lafayette. Um, it's, it's always a pleasure to bring a display to, uh, to Lafayette and to show it off for the general public and everybody else to see. Sure. Well, it's definitely a crowd favorite today. And would you give us a tour of um, sure. kind of what we got going on and where, where would you like to start? Anywhere's fine. We can start at the bunker. All right. right here. This is a really nice bunker. I hand-built this out of, out of wood and spent styrofoam and um, replicates a bunker that um, uh, probably 30 years ago or so with uh, wagons instead of trucks. Blades pushing up the uh, versatile air is pushing up the silage. Haleage actually right now for the time frame in June. And the edge of the, um, of the mixture there along the side uh, picking up a I've got a load of, load of feed in there headed out to feed the cows. Pulled by an 806. Uh, it's customized by my brother. Um, my brother Kurt, he did the work on that tractor then. If we move back across the display, um, you can see the, see the packer here sitting there and then also a truck full of round bales. It's coming from the hay field uh, just down the road or down the lane there. A uh, Lone Star truck and a roll of nut, nut wrap bales. Uh, if we go back down the fields, we'll come across the Ag Co-Star. Uh, it's built by Kevin McIntosh and then the um, Custom built, scratch built disc, and packer built by Kirk Peterson. Uh, both are two scale and, and replicate actual units. Is it kind of like a, a Glencoe packer then? Or? Uh, yeah, Glencoe or uh, Brilliant or something to that effect. Okay. The, the disc is modeled after a cross that we painted out of the house chalmers so for, for the age. Uh, I think it replicate, replicates a 20 foot disc. We've got Kevin McIntosh's nice uh, Agco star. Right, with the uh, clear cab and uh, really nice detail on that tractor. It's a really nice, nicely done tractor for uh, Agco star. And work your way back across the field. You come across a uh, 4430 uh, on singles. It's got more on a Moore's uh, three-point hitches installed on it and a completely uh, custom scratch-built uh, eight-row John Deere 7000 planer. Uh, <clears throat> it uses C&D units. But it's uh, got a completely built, uh, scratch built uh, frame and, uh, and marker arms and hitch. And, uh, the tractor's been customized with saddle tanks. Looks like it's been a well used tractor on the farm. It is a well used tractor. Pretty well, pretty well used unit. As we move across, we'll move across the display, come across the hay field here. Uh, we're the first of June in Michigan, so uh, we're doing a little bit of finishing of planting of beans, and then we're taking first cut hay. Um, they're rolling it up here with the claws. Um, claws, are, that's the variant style base hay from claws, and a McCormick tractor on the front. Um, and sitting next to it is our is our V rake with 1466. Um, 1466. Uh, well, the, the, the hay field is is. Uh, is for, the hay is for sale um, through the farm, and then the 1466 was built by Kurt. It's customized. It's Ertis casting, and then um, all the detail is done by him, complete with fender radio and and uh, front weights. Um, now those are the tractor fab those weights. Those are tractor fab okay. weights on the front, um, painted to match. Now I got to ask about running the duels on the the baling tractor and the the rake. Well, it's a pretty big rake, so. Um, yeah, you're going to run over a little bit of hay, but you also need some some power to the ground for the, sure. for the tractor itself. And in the first of June, the, the hay ground's still a little bit wet in spots, so it gives you a little flotation so you don't cut into the hay fields. So sure. It's definitely nice to see a McCormick tractor out here as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a really neat little piece. Uh, it's actually built off the Puma frame and then uh, decaled out to, to hit the uh, McCormick-style tractor itself. The... Uh, Coming up into the into the uh, woods here, per se, um, there's a little disc in there, a little, little 12 foot disc um, from years gone by. Um, bigger and newer equipment kind of took over, and that's kind of sitting there in the weeds. Um, 
a little older barn and rock pile and just all the little pieces that really add to a display or then are showcased on this hilltop. Um, got the AMC Gremlin stuck in the corner with the hood up. Uh, I've seen one on a display or on a in real life once and I really like this uh, really like the idea and so I kind of copied that idea to fit, fit to the display. Got another Klaus Baller up here on a Magnum 190, 180? 180, I believe. Yep, 180. Okay. Um, it's just a basic stock hurdle tractor there. The balers are, are hand-built by my by my brother, Kurt. He did all those work on those. And uh, same style baler, just a little different tires. Still putting some hay in the old barn? Uh, taking it out, actually. Oh, taking uh, it out. That's a load going out. Um, the hay stored in this little barn instead of up in the big barn. And so that's a load going out to a customer by the old Dodge. Uh -huh. And then coming back across the side, the other side of the hayfield, there's a little GMC pickup. And so the, one of the guys there, he's you know, probably sitting on lunch or something like that. So, sure. uh, and then the, the trans star with the short, short deck, loading a, loading a load of hay, headed back to the barn for storage. For the, Is that a good old industrial international? Yep, good old. We had one on the farm, similar to that. Okay. So we thought it'd be kind of cool to bring one out and put it on the display. Sure. Got a nice case IH mower. Yep, and it's sitting like, there on, on brake. Looks like you've detailed it out a little bit. Detailed out a little bit. Handrails and uh, mirrors, looks like. I like your fence rows. You got a little bit of wood and thing. Well, we tried for yeah. every piece of realism possible. Sure. Uh, that looks like a, really got a truck here waiting to get the seed for the planter. Yep, uh, we got liquid in it for the, for the tractor as well as uh, seed for the planter. A little tender truck. Get another look at the planter from the front side. Now this was a neat thing on the display is um, some beans that are already up. Or... Yeah, and actually um, it, it looks like beans to some. To some of us they look like sugar beets if you thin them a little bit. Uh, the original intent was to make them look like sugar beets. Uh, time got away from me though in building the display and I wasn't able to do the thinning that I needed to do to make it look real. So, so I guess the big question is where do you where do you get something like this because these rows you know look really effective to have crops out there. That came from Scenic Express. Okay. Um, they have a, a product out there. Um, this was like three packages of the product put in here and it covers um, I think each package covers like 20 inches or something like that. So. That was a package, would you say, about eight ninety five? About eight ninety five or nine dollars, something like that. So it was it was something new. I'd never used it before. Got it, tried it, and it worked really good. It went down with regular glue. It was really kind of cool to work with. It's so. very nice. Another Good look the, at the at the Lone Star there. Good, nice uh, dry creek here. Yeah, and uh, in in the past I've rounded out creeks um, to kind of give a smooth mm -hmm. edge to it. Decided I wanted to do a sharp edge this time, like a lot of ours is, uh, and it really turned out really nicely. Uh, white tractor there, uh, 2180 I believe it is. That one was also done by Kevin McIntosh, and then uh, a little bit of custom added custom pieces by my brother um, on the Gale chopper. Um, it's farm's main chopper. There is no self-propelled here, and um, as you can see, we use wagons still here. So. Nice three-point on there. Yep. Get another look at the 806 up here. Sure. Now, when we start looking at the the barn over here, uh, I really like. Is that uh, sawdust piled up inside there, or is that it's feed coming down? Feed coming down. Uh, okay. The loader tractor definitely would go in there and get a load of high moisture corn, ground corn, sure. and then bring it out and put it in the TMR uh, to do a full mix creation. And the 1466 here, um, let's customize again along with the spreader uh, for another tractor in the farm, open cab. Uh, the barn is built after uh, my where I lived as a child, my dad's barn. Um, it's, it's 40 by 90, 45 by 90. Um, I hand built it uh, out of basswood and balsa wood. Um, it's been about a two year project and uh, it's still not finished but it's, it's, uh, it's coming along. Uh, shoot, cattle shoot there, we're getting ready to load out cattle. Cattle trucks pulling in the driveway. Um, and. Uh, now you've got some really nice rock along the base. Uh, that's a, that's another product put out by Scenic Express. It's called it's a foam actually, <laughs> and you can cut it really easily with a with a hobby knife, um, and it's adhesive, so you can like put a wall behind it, and then it, adhere it directly to it. It comes in strips, 
and it was a really nice product to, to use uh, instead of having to set all those rocks by hand. Sure. Well, now this is kind of a standout piece is a, a Minneapolis Moline baler on a 1206. And yeah, we found the baler down in um, St. Louis last year, and the 1206 was, is a uh, is the recent uh, one put out by Spectatist with the fenders pulled off from the front. And it's set up as a roll crop instead of as a um, wheatland. And uh, that's just a trade secret. We can't share what, uh, I would take the fenders off and go from there. Uh, the uh, bale racks are built by Jason Kreiser out uh, of Kingsley and uh, kind enough to bring some down for us to put on the display this, today to, to show off. Very nice. All wood racks, they're really nice racks. Uh, kind of, of course, wood farm is complete without a kind of junk pile and, and an old uh, Chevy truck in there. Yeah, old Chevy, well, sure. Ford truck maybe, I don't know. It's a, uh, it's a Chevy. Chevy truck. I've been told it's a Chevy truck. Uh, yeah. Now, what did you do to the 815 combine here? It's really neat to see the weathering on it, and it looks like it has uh, worked hard in the field. Uh, Kurt, Kurt says he sandblasted light with a sand with a uh, sandblaster very lightly. Uh, gets it down to the rough metal and down to the bare metal in certain spots, and it also. Takes the clear coat off the top. Yep. Gives it that weathered look, the old old used look. Well, we get a nice big plow here for tillage. And yeah, it goes on the back of one of the big four-wheel drives, probably the egg too. Now this barn inside here, we got a nice kind of shop and shed and nice old uh, Massey 1150. Yeah, Massey 1150. Um, it's one of Dale Matson's units, where I purchased it from. Um, and then uh, the combine was uh, built by my built by Kurt. He, uh, he he did the custom work on the cab and and the raisable feeder house and, and some of the other goodies on it. Hey, you, well, all of the combines are clear cabs. You almost forget the 2366s didn't have them. That's right. It came with a black cab instead of a clear cab. Looks like there might be a corn reel back in there. There's a corn reel back in there. Every once in a while, the wind gets off, gets away from us. I use it. Now this must be the wheat combine getting ready. It is. It's getting ready to go um, for wheat later in the shop. Doing a check over on it. And a nice uh, big Dodge Ram parked here by the shop. Yeah, uh, Jim Rye built that one and as well as the other blue one on the display. Okay. Um, one for me and then one for Kurt. And it was a nice way to showcase his work uh, this time on this on this display. And I uh, really like the old uh, Farmall uh, 200 here. Yeah, with the little wow. two-bottom plow. That's a nice little unit for in your garden and uh, your uh, corn patch out back for the deer to feed on. Sure. Yeah. Nice old uh, truck here. Yeah, That's nice little Chevy, old Chevy. Now we come back to this side, there's a few other things tucked away in the barn. Uh, old IH, uh, is it a Lodestar or a C65? C65. Okay. Chevy. Chevy. And, uh, uh, Alice Chalmers uh, bulldozer. Yep, bulldozer. I bet that was handy in the silage pile before yeah. four-wheel drive. That's right, before four-wheel drive, that was the best thing to have on the silage pile. Three-row head for the gale. Yep. Take another look at the, this barn just really, it's neat how you can see through that. And yeah. Uh, um, it, it's built with uh, with wood, and, and you know it's an old-style barn, so there's a lot of gaps in it. And um, I tried to build it that way, so it, it gave the feeling that it was older wood instead of brand new, off the shelf type wood. Yeah. And a couple of things over here along the shed is a cultivator and a snowplow. You gotta have that snowplow for Michigan winters. Sure. And then the pasture, the farm pastures are our last, our last stop. This was this was a little bit harder to build as far as layout goes, simply because it was a um, it's a two stage hill, and um, nothing's ever smooth in a in a display. It just isn't, and so I tried to capture the edges and the ridges of the of the uh, of the hill, and the cuts where water makes runs and so on as as it runs down the hill, and um, it turned out I think pretty good in uh, when, it, when I was finished with it, especially once I textured it with foam and uh, put the Scenic Express uh, dirt on top of it. it oh, that's, um, it looks just like a real pasture, and especially the way the sunlight's hitting it today. Got a little bit of a low spot. And 
Yeah, uh, there's always uh, places where there's sinkholes or sand holes or something like that. So I tried to capture that as well. Maybe even a holding pond as water runs off the hilltop from down towards the bottom. Over here, you got um, kind of temporary electric fence. And... Yeah, um, probably not going to hold them long, but uh, it is temporary ele electric fence until we are uh, able to put in something more solid. They get some deep holes though. This would come back. I also wanted to just show the feeder over here. And... Bunk over there. Um, J bunk, I guess they call it. Well, we really appreciate you bringing this out to the, the show and uh, appreciate everything the Michigan Mafia guys do for our hobby to just lend us new ideas and enjoy seeing all your work. You offered up the opportunity to bring a three, four by eights to this, uh, to this display, to this show. And so I, I kind of took it on as a challenge to do it. And um, it literally was a, a challenge to bring this all and put it all together uh, in time for this show. But uh, like you said, the, the Mafia, uh, and the Michigan Mafia, we kind of all fit in together and make it And it was kind of cool to, to be able to provide that for this show and showcase a three, four by eight display this show. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. And I, I can't wait to see what you guys uh, Bring up next. I hope you'll come back here next year, and maybe Always. we'll see you in uh, St. Louis or the National too. We like to come to Lafayette. It's a, it's a fun show to come to, and uh, it's just real, real relaxing here and, and a good time. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you.